Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what the day is, tomorrow is, whatever, place your cross on first. You know, as a Christian, you have duties to do. You have things that Lord, the Lord has you to do, not just for others, for yourself, to keep you grounded. You understand? How can you try to keep somebody else grounded if you're not even grounded in the faith yourself, the faith that you trust in, the faith that you believe in? If you're not studying to show yourself approved, how can you educate others on something you don't even read you understand or something you don't even try to focus on you know just keep that in mind as a follower of christ as always place your cross on first our father which are in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. Lord, Jesus, ask you to use me as you've seen fit today, Lord Jesus, to bring forth whatever word it is you want me to bring forth. Send out your Holy Spirit to comfort, the teacher, to use me today, Lord Jesus, to spread this word so it can bear fruit. Allow me to preach this word and spread this word in all truth and all honesty through your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Today I'm going to read from Kings today, but I'm going to get down to the fruit of the whole story first. All right, I'm going to read a one-liner to two-liners. Actually, I'm going to go to Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to read chapter, I mean, verse 25 of Colossians. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Did you hear that? But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Take that to heart. That goes for everyone. You think the Bible's lying when it says that? Yes, God forgives sins. But what does it say right here again? Let me read it one more time to let it soak into your heads. But he that have do that he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he done, and there's no respect of persons. Did you hear that? He that doeth wrong. God said there's no respect of persons. First of all, let me go back a little further. I'm gonna go to Kings. Actually, I'm going to go back to Samuel to show you how God has no respect of persons. No matter who you are, Christian, non-Christian, believer, anointed, follower of Christ, king, president, poor, rich, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Let's go back to David real quick. Let's go back to David. Let's go back to David. I might bounce around. This might be a pretty long video today, but it's a lot to cover. You understand? But it's all good. But it's all good. Let's go back. Let's go back to Samuel. You understand? All right. It's kind of, it's a lot of stories in here that just show you how God has no respect of purpose, person at all. At all. You know what I'm saying? He shows mercy. He gets forgiveness. And guess what? He still does the same thing. Now let's read the story of David. Of David. Of David. Chapter 11 of Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 11. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David said to Joab and his servants with him and all Israel that destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabba, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. Just remember that name, Joab. Joab was a, one of uh, David's right hand man. Now watch this. I'm going to show you scripture before I even go in front of show you scripture, how it has so many double meanings. You see, David had a lot of mighty men around him. If you do the math, it's probably 12. You understand? 
But he had one that betrayed him. Joab, Judas, so significant. So significant. So how the Bible foreshadows events. Out of all these acts and things that Joab did with David, towards the end of his life, he did some things in regards to Jack David that were not pleasing to the Lord. And guess what? He's going to suffer for it. And he's, guess what? He walked with David the whole time. He slew men with David. He did all these things. But just remember that name, Joab. Like I said, this might be a long video today. And it came to pass, I mean, David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening time that David arose from his bed and walked upon the roof of King's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers. Now, first of all, he inquired about this man, about this woman. And guess what? He already knew something. Right off the bat, his messengers come back and tell him, hey. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt covet thy neighbor's wife, thy neighbor's property. So David knew the word. But right now at this time, I guess the enemy is snuck in. And David sent messages and took her after he knew the truth, knew she was a married woman. And she came into him and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. She was pregnant. He impregnated her. And David sent to Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite and Joab. Joab the Uri sent Uriah to David. Here's Joab again, his right-hand man. And when Uriah was coming to him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. So he's trying to cover up his error. Hey, go home. Hopefully he'll go home and sleep with his wife. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Nah. Even for to cover this sin up. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went down to the house, David said to Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark in Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As thou livest and as thou soul liveth, I will do this. I will not do this thing. So he's like, no, nah, man, I'm going to be here with the fellas. Hey, I'm going to go home for everybody else. I hear I'm going to stay here. So that didn't work. And David said to Uriah, tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and tomorrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even, he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. Let's keep in mind, Joab, Joab, he's always somebody. But God use everything, right? All things work together for those who believe. God use everything. But even the wrong you do, you still get rewarded for it. He would send Joab. Joab is kind of mischievous his person anyway. A good fighter. But you understand? But he's a killer. Literally. And he wrote the letter saying, Set ye Raya in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. So that's the plan. That's the plan David came up with. Hey, send him to the front lines. That he may die, try to cover up my sin. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. And there fell some of David, of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, Wherefore approach thee so high unto the city, when ye did fight, Knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? 
who smote Abimelech, the son of Jerobosheth? Did not a woman cast a piece of millstone upon him from the wall that he died in the Tabez? Why went ye nigh to the wall? Then say thou, thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went and showed David all that Joab had sent him for. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevailed against us, and came out unto us unto the field. And we were upon them, even unto the entering of the gate. And the shooters shot from off the wall upon the servants, and some of the king's servants be dead. And thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. He planned to do it. It happened. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Make thy battle more strong against the city and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched for her to his house, and she became his wife. And bear him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Now just keep in mind. Bathsheba. Bathsheba. Who is Bathsheba? The mother of. She's the mother of Solomon. A woman that he stole from another man. You understand? I'm going to say I wrote stuff rolled down here so bad. But you know, that's not the end of the story. But... This is going to cover a huge array. I might just focus on David and Uriah. I mean, David and Bathsheba, but I think I feel like I got to show a little bit more than that today. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him, said unto him, Nathan was a prophet, a man of God, who was David's seer, somebody who spoke to David for, from the Lord. There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him. And with his children it did eat of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler to the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was coming to him, but took the poor man's lamb, and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David said, Anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he says to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die. But I'm going to show you how forgiving God is, right? But at the same time, he's forgiving. And guess what he does? He still punishes. And you're going to see this right here. Clear as day. That's why you need to read your Bible. You think you just get away with evil. You don't. You don't. Okay, who you are? What did Colossians say? Let me go back to that a little further right quick before you, before I continue on. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Yes, the Lord forgives sins. He does. But he's a reward of evil too. Do you know that? Do you read your Bible? Do you know that? Do you understand? I hope you do, because I'm going to let you. Let this, as long as the spirit is dwelling in me and telling me what to say, guess what? I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, and Nathan said to David, thou art the man. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel and delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house. And thy master's wife into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would more have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite. Now think about it, this man of God didn't know, but the Lord showed him and he told David. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and has taken his wife to be thy wife. And has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house. Because thou hast despised me and has taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, 
and give them to thy neighbor. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also have put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. He forgave him. He forgave him. Watch this. Watch this. Can I go to your Bible? To the Bible right quick. Let's go to Psalm 32. Everything serves a purpose in here. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. But I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My marshes turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto thee. But do you get the picture? He prayed for forgiveness. And guess what? God forgive him. Hmm. 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 Yes, he forgives sins. Yes, he does. But he don't like evil neither. Do you understand? Who the Lord loved, he chastises. But as he said, he was like, the man who did this shall be put to death. God was like, I got you. You ain't going to kill you for this. I forgive you. But you finna go through some things behind this. How about because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemy of the Lord to blaspheme the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. I'm going to take that child away from you. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David. And it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. <coughs> and it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel. And came to the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required that sit, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Then said his servants unto him, Why this thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child when it was alive, but when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. You're gonna get up. You're gonna get a message here. And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who can tell whether God would be gracious to me? That the child may live. You see, David understood this. God can change his mind. But it's up to him. Who can tell? Just because you prayed sometimes, that doesn't mean that God didn't answer prayer. God did according to his will. What he wanted to do. What he wanted to allow to happen. Not necessarily that your prayers are not powerful. So what did David do right after that? He got up, washed up. Hey, I tried. The Lord did as he wanted. But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, who was somebody else's, and went into her and lay with her. And she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him. And so he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jebediah. Jedediah, because of the Lord. And Joab fought against Rabbah of the children of Ammon and took the royal city. And Joab sent message to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah and have kept the city of waters. Now, now therefore, actually I ain't got to read nothing on that part right there. But what was this punishment? What was this punishment, people? 
What was his punishment? What was David's punishment? Hmm. Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 10. Now therefore the Saul shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. The Saul will never depart from thine house. You're going to have tro troubles in your house because of this one misfortune. I love you. I forgive you. But you done started a chain of events that's going to plague your house as long as you live. You understand? And I'm going to take the child, the first child. But I'm a gracious God. I'm going to give you another child. And his name will be Solomon. God is good. And God executes vengeance. He executes righteous judgment. He's a constant reward of those that diligently seek him. And he's a constant punisher of those who disobey him. If you think this is a lie, read your Bible and see what Colossians said. To him that do evil. Can I read it again for you? Or do I have to? I'll go back to it. So, right after this, let me give you some recaps. Right after this, David had a son. And all hell finna break loose in his house. Now, and it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Ammon, the son of David, loved her. And Ammon was so vexed that she fell sick for her sister Tamar. For she was a virgin, and Ammon thought it hard for her, for him to do anything to her. But Ammon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah's David, brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why thou being the king's son, lean from day to day? And wilt thou not tell me? And Ammon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. And with thy father, you got to kind of, the devil always maneuvering around some kind of way. This so called friend of his, this so called friend of his, Jonadab, the devil that snuck in and started weaving his magic. Why did the devil come in? Because David let him in. How can you destroy a strong man's house? You must first bind the strong man. David was a strong man. How could the devil get into his house? To sin. Do you understand? And not that his house, his family's house. To one sin. God told David, look what he said. I would more have given unto thee such and such things. Just wait on me. I would have gave you anything. I would have gave you all things. Anything you desired. After my heart, after your heart, you are a man of my own heart. But for this moment, he said, man is not, God does not tempt man. Man is tempted when he is led away by his own lust. And then sin is conceived. And through sin, the house of the strong man has been broken into. Wow, the Bible is so deep, ain't it? Don't you love it? Don't you love it? It teaches you things, people. It teaches you things. Let's continue. Jonadab, the devil. <laughs> I ain't saying he's the devil, but he's under the influence. Because no true friend is going to advise some type of thing like this. But the devil has been let in. Lay thee down on the bed and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Ammon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Ammon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. Then David said to her, home to Tamar, saying, go now to thy brother's Ammon's house and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Ammon's house and he was laid down. Down, and she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Ammon said, Have out all men from me. And they went out every man from him. And Ammon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into thy chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which he, she had made and brought them into the chamber to Ammon her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. 
And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing are to be done in Israel. Do not this folly. Look how easily God steps in to people. Don't do this. It's always a warning. David. Oh, let's, let's see the warning David got. Let's see the warning David got again. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Aliam, the wife of Uriah, the hot Hittite? A warning! It's always a warning. If you pay attention. But sometimes sin just makes you block your judgment. Sometimes the devil block your judgment. But God is a forgiving God. Things happen. She got this. He got this hint. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not this folly. She said, Do not force me. Now watch this. She forgave him another warning. And I will shall I cause my shame to go. And as far thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king. For he will not withhold me from thee. If you want me, ask for the king. Ask the king. Ask the king. And he'll give it to me. Ask the king. <laughs> People, ask the king. He'll give you your heart's desire. You don't have to steal, rob, or do anything to get what God has for you. Right then, this day, all you had to do was ask the king. He was the son of the king. But he wanted to take it by force. Rape as you. How be who is not hearkening to her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. Then Ammon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Ammon said to her, Arise, be gone. After he then raped her, after the devil had entered her to him and caused him to do that, that evil spirit then left out the building. Spiritual things, people, then left. Hmm. He let the devil in. David let him in. To his house. And she said to him, There is no cause this evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered to him and said, Put now this woman out for me, and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of divers colors upon her, for which such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and ran her garments of divers colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Have Ammon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was wroth. And Absalom spake unto his brother Ammon, neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Ammon because he had forced his sister Tamar. It's crazy. I read further on this morning. Absalom named his daughter after his sister Tamar. That's just a little side story. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep shearers in Bel Belhazar, which is beside Ephraim. And Absalom invited all the king's sons. Absalom came to the king and said, Behold, now thy servant have sheep shearers. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us all not now go, lest we be charged one to thee. And he bread pressed them, how by he would not go, but blessed him. Then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with me. So two years he'd been plotting this about what happened to his daughter, to his sister. And you know, God says not reward evil for evil. You shouldn't. This is why, because it keeps going. It keeps going. Don't hold grudge. He had a two-year grudge. But it is. It's because of what David did. And God said it would happen, and it is happening now. Let me pause, and I will continue.